everyone and uh, welcome to entrepreneur india second and only i am sita i am chief correspondent with entrepreneur india and i will be moderating this very interesting panel on the impact of insurtech on the larger insurance industry so uh, today we have put together this uh, very diverse panel with some of the leading insurtech startups uh, that are bringing about a uh, major disruption in the insurance industry so you know before i begin i have to say that uh, disruption has become a key catch phrase everywhere so be it uh, business politics and even for the public thought for that matter so uh, while this disruption may manifest as uh, new business models or upending of old ones uh, what is enabling all of this change is really technology and uh, this is exactly what we will be discussing today that how these six startup founders present, presented us today are bringing about them interesting and very different kind of tech innovation so whether it is creating new insurance products or digitizing distribution or even digitizing the otherwise very complicated process of claim settlement so let me begin with uh, introducing our speakers so we have rohan kumar who is ceo and co-founder of toffee insurance uh, we zoo co-founder sorry founder and ceo of iglu iglu is a, a singapore based insurtech startup we have birendra maya wanshi who is the co-founder of totalment Uh, Vijay Kumar is CEO and Principal Officer of Digit General Insurance, who will be joining us. Who will be joining us shortly. Anil Joshi is the Managing Partner of Unicorn India Ventures, and Tarun Mathur, who is the Co-Founder and Chief Business Officer of Policy Bazaar. I am delighted to welcome all the speakers. Thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, so we will start with you know all of you. Please take turns to run us through the technology or innovation that you're using in your respective companies. So, uh, should we start with you, Rohan? Uh, sure. Okay. So, hi. Um, uh, like Rupya said, uh, I'm Rohan. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Toffee Insurance. Um, and if I can go out on a limb to say one thing is that you know across the panel uh, and across the insurtech ecosystem right now, I think the single goal for most of us has been to simplify uh, the complex sort of nature of insurance at large. and what sort of that means is that you know various uh, ecosystems are being evolved and solved for whether that's from a product point of view whether that's from uh, the underwriting principles whether that is from the using technology to create a simplified user flow all the way to sort of claims and processing so uh, toffee sort of originated about 3 uh, years ago um, with a view that we want to make insurance products uh, accessible affordable and relevant uh, we're not a distribution business we are set out as a product tech business so our first approach was how do we simplify products so that more people can actually understand what is it that they're buying into so traditionally if you look at it uh, you know the complicated nature of insurance and the jargons that come along with it made it very sort of almost impossible for consumers to understand uh insurance comprehensive insurance products unless there was a face attached to it so somebody had to sort of walk you through the entire or uh, the components of insurance at large before they actively decided to buy a policy or buy a product into it so our, our sort of first foray was to really sort of deconstruct products into what we call as bite size sachet sachet style sort of uh, products so think products like uh, uh, dengue insurance malaria insurance bicycle insurance and where we sort of come from is really sort of working backwards with underwriting and insurance partners uh, across the board so we work with about uh, nine different insurance partners at the back and what we do is we look at these comprehensive products we pull out features uh, build out mass market use cases and deconstruct these features into standalone products so a dengue insurance comes out of a comprehensive health insurance policy Uh, what it does is a couple of different things uh, it narrows the product into a single use case so if you uh, have dengue you get coverage if you don't have dengue you don't get coverage so sort of build a portfolio of products which will be slightly more easily understood by consumers uh, and sort of that was our starting point for going out there and creating a change in the way consumers think about insurance we're a completely digital first business so you know we don't sort of uh run around and selling these products uh physically uh we integrate our products directly embed them into platforms now whether these are point of sale ecosystems so let's uh, take the example we have a product like a bicycle insurance uh we simplify the entire user flow so what that means is we uh not only sort of support the consumers from 
buying the policy, but also all the way to making claims and servicing on that policy. Uh, we embed our APIs. You know, most businesses today run on APIs. I, you know, it's it's sort of saying uh, uh, if you have to be uh, digital, that's a bare minimum uh, at, at the moment. So we have uh, APIs which can be injected wherever, whether it's a digital ecosystem or a point of sale ecosystem. Um, and essentially, the idea is to natively embed these products into where a conversation is already happening with the consumer. So what does that mean? That essentially means that let's say you walk into a bicycle store, uh, you're looking to buy a bicycle. Uh, the consumer today uh, is looking at accessories. Uh, the merchant then suggests, hey, look, why don't you buy uh, an insurance which would cover theft and damage for your bicycle as well? Uh, he uses our Toffee Seller app, inputs uh, a few fields of information, and the policy is issued instantly uh, to that end consumer. So sort of a very simplified end-to-end -end user flow, which allows consumer, a first-time consumer who has not probably you know, been outside of the insurance ecosystem to have an experience which makes it seem almost like a commoditized uh, version of buying insurance. So think uh, you know, when you're buying something off Amazon, could we sort of recreate that experience for a consumer buying insurance? Now, it gets harder when the insurance products uh, are a little bit more complicated, are a little bit more traditional. Uh, so it works very well for sort of single narrow use case products all the way through. But that allows for users to sort of uh, reduce the hurdles of people wanting to buy insurance. Um, I'll quickly sort of end on one simple note. I think with sort of the current ecosystem and the and the uh, epidemic that has sort of uh, disrupted the uh, sort of uh, entire economy, this is the first time in the last you know two or three decades that we're finding a product like insurance has almost sort of become a pull product. So people are actively sort of reassessing their uh, sort of protection needs as well as sort of assessing what should they uh, sort of look out for and not look out for. So this is a great opportunity for businesses across the board to sort of simplify that process when there is a consumer who's wanting to relate to insurance right now. So that's what Toffee does in a nutshell. Uh, we try and simplify, uh, create affordable, accessible, and relevant insurance products uh, across a wide spectrum of uh, demographic, uh, as early as a 20-year-old all the way up to 40, 45-year-old. Um, and uh, we've been, I would say, fairly successful across a, a wide range of uh, category of products. So thank you, Shipra. That's uh, all from my side. All right, that's that's very great. You know, I, I have I am a personal finance journalist, and I I even wrote on Toffee Insurance a year back when I was uh, with another publication, and it's really wonderful. You know what uh, what Sashi financial products, what kind of niche segment Sashi financial products can serve to? You know where the the mainstream guys cannot reach. So that way, yes, I think Toffee is doing a really wonderful job. Uh, okay, so uh, let me come to you, uh, Vizu, uh, if you could please tell us about Igloo. Yes. Hi, guys. Can you, can you guys see me? Okay. So, yeah, so Igloo, we are an uh, insure tech player um, based in Singapore, but our focus is actually in the whole Southeast Asia. Um, so today we have presence in uh, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia uh, and Vietnam just recently. So uh, we are we now uh, you know process uh, more than fifty million insurance policies uh, and cover tens of millions of customers. Um, so yeah, it's the company has been there for about six years, uh, about four years uh, since two thousand sixteen. Um, so I think uh, from the audience, um, you know, it's I think most of our panels are. are we're carving India, um, so we are, you know, looking at Southeast Asia, um, and just so people get a perspective, Southeast Asia have about six hundred sixty million uh, people. So it is in in aggregation, it's a very large market, uh, and also the the, the GDP uh, per capita in uh, Southeast Asia um, varies, um, and um, you know, it could be as low as. Uh, you know, uh, six hundred, uh, four, 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 uh, four thousand six hundred uh, in Indonesia uh, to uh, high, as high as uh, sixty-eight thousand uh, in Singapore. So it's uh, a wide spectrum, uh, and also um, the I think one of the you know disadvantage of uh, uh, working in Southeast Asia is that it's kind of pretty different jurisdictions, right? So each country have their own independent and separate. 
uh, regulations for insurance. Um, so therefore, uh, it does take more effort uh, for us to establish presence through multiple countries. Uh, but I think uh, you know, on the other hand is that once you spend the effort and you build up uh, that expertise uh, to operate in each country, that in itself becomes a competitive advantage. Um, so, and I think we, we've, we've, we've put a bunch of effort to, now we, we have that regional coverage, um, which is something that pretty works very well with our partners. So, you know, we've been um, really focusing a lot on the e-commerce ecosystem, uh, where we partner with most of the top e-commerce players in the region. Uh, so the um, guys like Bukla Park in Indonesia, Lazada, Shopee across Southeast Asia, Benica in Indonesia. Um, so uh, we work with those partners and to provide a bunch of micro insurance products uh, that service the need of customers and those ecosystems. So we started off with um, the sort of more traditional shipping uh, insurance for logistics of e-commerce. So covering things like uh, loss and damage during shipment, and also extend that to things like returns. So we have made, we, we made the, the return of part as a insurance as well, so that people, if people buy something and they're happy, um, you know, then they, they want to request returns. The cost associated with returns is actually covered by the insurance company instead of by, say, the seller or the buyer. And that really helps, uh, you know, smooth the frictions during the uh, e-commerce transactions. And that, uh, that makes like a win-win situation for everyone. Um, and, then, and, and since then, we've also expanded our coverage part to things like device protections. So uh, we, for example, developed a, uh, a patented technology uh, for uh, detecting if a mobile phone screen is cracked. Uh, before we issue a policy. So for that, we use things like computer vision uh, and machine learning to be able to, you know, uh, quickly and uh, um, simply verify the condition. And that significantly can reduce the, the, um, the possibility of fraud and therefore bring down a cost for all consumers. Um, and, and so our product device production has done pretty well with our uh, partners. We've expanded that to from e-commerce to uh, mobile carriers as well, telcos. Um, so and uh, another area that we've got into is uh, travel insurance and personal accident insurance. Um, so that's also have been going very well. Um, so our travel insurance, of course, um, got affected by the COVID-19 situation. Um, and so experienced a pretty dramatic uh, uh, drop. Um, but uh, luckily, I think that's starting to recover. Uh, so we're hopeful that this is also going to be a, also a meaningful business for us uh, for the rest of 2020. Um, and then, you know, so we, so one of the things I think differentiate us with uh, some of the other players, uh, but also but similar to Otafi, is that we are very much a um, full stack player. So we built uh, the entire tech stack, all the way from distribution to um, risk assessment, fraud detections, to digital, pure digital claims management um, by ourselves. And we would provide all the embedded APIs, SDKs, uh, that allow us, our partners to be able to easily integrate into their particular scenario and into their website um, and applications. Um, and uh, on the, on the other end of the spectrum, we work with multiple insurance partners across Southeast Asia, um, where you know we provide both uh, API access as well as uh, the ability to basically run the entire system, uh, including issue policies on their behalf on our system, and then provide them data access um, and uh, you know analysis dashboard, etc. So by doing this way, we I think helped our insurance partners. To be more nimble and to be able to bring product to market faster, right? Because if you think about it, for traditional players, oftentimes their backend system uh, is pretty arcane, uh, hard to use, and it's slow. So, but utilizing the system that we have, we can you know, work together with our insurance partners to be able to bring product 
uh, to the market at a very fast pace and to provide a much smoother, simpler um, uh, clean experience for their customers. Um, so that's that's basically what uh, Eagle is about. Thanks. Oh, I forgot to switch on my microphone. Sorry. Yeah, Dhiren, we'll come to you quickly. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we uh, we at Turtle Mint are a, a five-year-old uh, uh, company in the business of uh, using technology to distribute insurance or insure tech. Uh, we, uh, we we started around 2015 uh, with the primary thesis that uh, uh, insurance is a complex product and uh, consumers need support. and uh, advisory uh, to make a decision on the product uh, and usually the decision making uh, is uh, validated by a consumer uh, through an in-person network uh, who has an expertise in the product and he has a trust relationship uh, with that person and hence we felt strongly that that person who is in his network uh, uh, can help him and support him very well at the time of making a decision, but also at the time of uh, claim. Uh, so when we started building, we keeping that in mind, uh, we built a, pl a platform that these experts or advisors can use uh, to distribute insurance to their in-person network and hence uh, are able to bridge the gap that exists between consumers understanding of the product uh, and the decision making. Uh, the uh, the technology that we have built uh, has uh, different layers uh, as a part of the offering. Uh, one primary activity that is needed uh, on the platform is uh, customer relationship management, where uh, an advisor is able to use the uh, platform to uh, send renewal reminders, issue quotes, uh, track their customers, and uh, and carry out the business of insurance. Uh, yeah, armed with a phone or a or a laptop the platform also has a, a skill enhancement and training uh, uh, as an offering uh, uh, the primary idea is that uh, uh, we've created micro bite sized training modules uh, within the platform uh, that allow this advisor to upskill themselves uh, and keep themselves updated with the latest offerings uh, that uh, come up in the market uh, and that uh, they are able to offer to their uh, customers. Uh, the uh, uh, the platform also has a smart algorithm that allows the advisor to uh, choose the right product or help the customer choose the right product uh, uh, that suits the needs of that customer in his uh, 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 in his profile, and uh, uh, and the customer is also able to buy a product or the uh, the advisor can help him buy the product online and the policy is issued on a real time basis. We uh, uh, we have about seventy eight thousand uh, such advisors who are spread throughout the country uh, who have uh, successfully uh, been uh, on the platform. Uh, to these advisors, we issue close to about one hundred and fifty thousand uh, policies every month. Last year, we did about a million uh, policies uh, on the platform. What we also uh, offer is uh, we offer uh, marketing and awareness. Uh, 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 services as a digitized offering where the uh, advisor can uh, use this material uh, uh, and get him to get uh, uh, use that material to generate leads uh, for himself. Uh, and a case in point, uh, uh, an example is when the uh, uh, road traffic fines were increased around uh, September last year. Uh, Two-wheeler as a category was was underinsured. In fact, most 70% of the two-wheelers on the road uh, did not have an insurance policy. And the fine that time that was implemented was uh, about 2,000 rupees. Uh, through this marketing platform, the advisors were able to reach out uh, to their in-network customers via social media and generate leads for themselves. And we saw about in that time frame, in about 20 days time frame, more than 200,000 two-wheeler policies getting issued in states that had implemented the fines. Uh, 
and uh, this is one example of how the platform not only allows them to generate new leads but also uh, uh, create awareness about uh, about the insurance products within his uh, in network uh, uh, customers uh, we have uh, we mostly deal in uh, health insurance uh, life insurance uh, and uh, and uh, motor insurance uh, we work very closely with the uh, insurance companies we have uh, created api integration with insurance companies that that allow for real time issuance uh, and uh, uh, we have also launched custom products based on the data insights that we uh, get from the market our product is available in eight languages uh, and uh, hence the usage is very high in fact 80% of our policy issuance uh, happens in beyond 30 cities in, in cities beyond uh, the top 30 uh, and this is probably the market where the uh, where the consumer the, the insured is probably new to insurance and uh, uh, hence uh, sort of serves the purpose of increasing penetration uh, and also the platform becomes uh, like an employment generation opportunity uh, because this is a performance based uh, payment platform uh, and hence a person who is who wants to get into a micro entrepreneurship or uh, uh, get into a role of financial advisor he is able to use that platform to generate uh business for himself and generate extra income uh, for himself and we've seen that many uh, such advisors they entered insurance through the platform through us and but have now full time uh, switch to you uh, switch to uh, insurance as a industry for their for their career yeah, i'll pause here uh, yeah, this is a quick introduction of that all right uh Thank you, uh, Dhirendra. Uh, uh, so, Tarun, why don't you, uh, you know, take it up from here? Uh, so, Policy Bazaar is now about twelve years old. In fact, this month we had our twelfth birthday as a company, and uh, you know, we've uh, we've been here a long time. But I think we still operate like a startup. And uh, you know, when I say that, I I mean that we're still trying to solve the problem that we set out to do. uh i think we're we've made progress but i think there's a long way to go to kind of understand and build for consumers and be there for only for consumers right and uh, uh what i mean by that is uh you know when we started out uh, the only way to kind of purchase insurance was to have your uh, you know neighborhood uncle or uh, you know somebody in your family who is very happy to kind of sell you insurance these products that were sell sold at that time uh, in my humble view were uh not really customer centric right the products were <clears throat> were very distribution led but that means is that you know they were very uh good for the seller's pocket and uh we wanted to change that we wanted it to be about the customer we wanted to kind of uh you know have a an offering which is centered around the principles of what we call uh 3d which is death disease and disability so while we started off with motor insurance right because it it was what all our peers across the world were doing right motor insurance online made a lot of sense it's a simple product it's a mandatory product in india but our heart always was around protection of customers right and uh, we started off by selling a lot of the term insurance products that that are there in the country today and uh, you know that 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 became that became our thing if you if you would uh we wanted to basically go out there and tell customers that listen all the savings etc there are a lot of instruments but if you want to protect yourself then insurance is the only product that kind of works for you and uh you know we we started there we, you know we worked with multiple insurance companies the insurance companies were very very good to us uh they gave us a lot of space and a lot of uh, uh you know in fact the, the ability to innovate around products with them uh and we soon built a market around it today i think you know we we might be a a, a a fair part of the life insurance market but you know probably about whatever 2 to 3% of premiums uh when you look at the whole life insurance industry but what we are proud about is that we probably cover 17% of the country's insured value what i mean by is if you took it all the sum assured of life and took out the sum assured that policy bazaar sold ever we'd be 17% uh and that's our way of kind of going out and saying that you know protection is everything today health insurance is large for us right? trying to go for product which kind of break the norm uh, typically we've been seeing that you know a, a customer would buy a 5 lakh rupee cover uh, and you know seem very happy about it but uh, you know come covid uh, we realize that if one family uh, does uh, you know unfortunately uh, face this whole problem then for one person if he goes to a ventilator or, or goes to in fact hospitalization 
the cost is about one and a half lakhs. Now, if you had a five lakh rupee plan and all four family members are hospitalized, uh, then that cost exceeds what you would actually cover for. So this cover that we thought was adequate is not adequate. And we went about just communicating that. See, at heart, Policy Bazaar is a marketing and product company. That's all we are. That's all we ever wanted to be. And we basically uh, want to use this whole technology piece to communicate better and better products. And when you say innovation, the our innovation is very real world. It's not very cool. I understand that. Uh, but we don't want to be cool. We want to be out there for the customer and selling him the exact product that he needs every single day. The one that he's talking about, the one that we're talking about are probably the same. And, uh, you know, the kind of uh, place where this where they, where these two meet is if it's in the interest of the customer and in our interest too. Because we found that term insurance was not being sold to the country. Nobody really wanted to sell it. Uh, the life insurance industry at that time was selling uh, traditional products or power products, uh, which, uh, you know, for us, the returns weren't really there. Because if you compare a mutual fund uh, with a traditional product, the returns were not there. And if the returns aren't higher, at least me as an investor could not understand why I would ever uh, kind of buy that plan. Whereas term plans put it right there. Now, in terms of health insurance, what we've done is we we worked with insurance partners and now we have products from the insurance companies where you could buy a one crore cover. Remember, I, I said that the benchmark was five lakhs, a one crore cover at the cost of about six lakh rupees. Now, what I'm trying to say is that this whole bridging has been uh, taken a long time because the only way that an insurance company can do it is to kind of curtail their losses, right? And the only way to curtail losses is to ensure that the customers who are coming in are uh, uh, declaring to the best of their ability. And our platform centers around that. The way we monitor and the way we track and the fact that we do not have any layer in between and we do not have anybody who's not monitored the buying uh, at the point of buying purchase, which means there are no agents uh, out there who are not monitored. So all, all our staff is monitored, is on recorded calls, uh, you know, everything on the site is tracked closely. So the customer is declaring properly and based on that declaration, the loss ratios of insurance companies are lower. So we're trying to you know, stitch through two systems. One is where the customer get gains because he gets a very, very good aggressive product and the insurance company gains because the losses are limited. So all in all, I think what policy was trying to do is kind of solve the real world problem and uh, try and kind of, uh, uh, you know, build faith in insurance. Uh, for the customer and, and kind of say that, you know, if you buy from Policy Bazaar, you are going to get a claim, you are going to get better products. Uh, and, and that's who we are about. All right. Uh, thank you, Tarun. Uh, let me come to you, Mr. Anil. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, as, a, as an investor, I want to understand uh, how, I mean, India is definitely an underpenetrated market. We all know that. So in that sense, what kind of opportunity do you see in the insurance space, you know, with all these new age insurance uh, companies, insurance companies coming up? See, uh, thanks. Uh, see, India is uh, quite a large, you know, uh, domestic market. And the study says, uh, while you, you have rightly said it's, you know, uh, you know under, uh, you know, insured, uh, but I also would like to add that, you know, we are also uninsured kind of stage, right? Uh, if you look at the world average, you know, we are, we are, you know, not even probably half mark of, you know, uh, world average, uh, you know, insurance for countries. So with that gap, India offers, you know, huge opportunity for, you know, uh, insurance companies to capture. Uh, but considering the, you know, country size, diversity and, and contours, you know, it's not possible to, uh, you know, uh, do what uh, LIC did or life insurance did over so many years. So you have to take help of, you know, technology and technology is the only way which can actually help correcting these two anomalies. One, you know, uninsured. Uh, because you know people are not able to have access to insurance products so at least by providing access to insurance product uh, they will they will you know start getting insured so that way one problem will get solved then come the problem of underinsured uh, because you know you don't have access to right information you land up you know uh, you know uh, uh, being underinsured and and you know technology offers you know an opportunity to correct that anomaly right so with with these two objective uh, the fund uh, you know uh, is, is very much focused on tech you know based opportunities and that even you know made us you know invest in one insure tech company from fund one and uh, uh, we are in process of uh, investing another company which basically leverage both ai ml 
to underwrite uh, yeah. products right uh, today with with so many offerings you know uh, one also need to you know uh, offer products at you know uh, blink of eye but then that can only happen if you have a very strong back end right so so i uh, personally believe or or be at one level you know believe that you know insurance uh, which is being you know uh, highly under penetrated uh, have a huge scope to offer and if you know we have right kind of you know tech based solutions uh, like you know uh, has been you know shared by rohan right a specific uh, very very specific you know a product for a very specific issue i think india offers very huge opportunity to come with a customized product and that's what you know uh, you know we believe that uh, insurance uh, will offer not only you know a big market but also will offer opportunity to explore mix of products and that's what you know makes it a quite exciting space thank you uh, okay so uh, you know if when we have to talk about insurance i i have to start with uh, distribution because distribution really is the most if not more than definitely one of the most uh, critical elements in the insurance value chain uh so let me come to you tarun as you know policy builder i you just said that it has been uh, a digital distribution for 12 years now so how has technology really simplified distribution and not just simplified uh, you know how has it also helped with uh, insurance penetration or solving some of the customer facing problems so um, i can assure you that uh, our existence doesn't gar- uh, guarantee uh that you know the uh, uh the penetration will increase i think what requires uh to be done is that technology has to take uh, take the forefront and become simpler for customers see uh you know I, i'll give an example here uh, we uh, we you know when you when your car insurance expires and you want to buy another one then the insurance company requests you to kind of take an inspection of your car so they will send somebody uh who will kind of inspect your car see it's in good condition and then we do a policy now at policy bazaar when the customer used to come to us we used to then go back to the insurance company get the you know the surveyor to go and uh, you know get the inspection done and we realized that there were a lot of drop offs because sometimes the surveyor wouldn't go if he would go he would try and convert the customer to some other company uh, or he wouldn't turn up on time and it was causing a very bad experience so what we did was we built a very simple app Like very very simple, right? All it does is takes a video, a three sixty video of your car. Uh, you know, based on that, you know, we were able to kind of see if the car was in good condition. And based on that video, the insurance companies would, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, grant the policy or or or, or dismiss the policy. But if you look at it, the technology here was simple. I think the use case was more important. I think the fact that we need to uh, stop thinking that only AI and ML are technology is very important because. our solutions may be very different as long as we are using tech for the right reasons and not just to talk about it sitting in you know on a webinar like this one i think for us it was very important to identify what was more important to the customer and i think just simple video inspection app most people told us that you know people are sitting at the comfort of their home somebody is coming home and you know doing the inspection why would they ever use your app go outside in the sun and take a video but we realized that 100% of our customers today actually like using the app and i'm saying 100% because we don't do any more physical inspections uh, they were happier with it and they uh, our 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 nps scores improved our conversions improved which basically goes to say that you know uh, you have to give the customer a chance but the technology has to be simple enough you can't have a stage where you know you opens the app and it's downloading and it's you know uh, or 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 it doesn't work it just has to work properly it doesn't have to look cool it just has to work very cool and uh you know we have similar use cases everywhere so you know we we have this huge assistance unit which uh you know helps customers buy policies all these calls are recorded at all in my last uh, uh you know uh, monologue so to speak and what we started doing was we started putting our uh, listening technology in there and we started transcribing all these calls and we started hunting for what the customer wants we realized a lot of things we realized that uh, the customer is actually already telling you what he wants if you were just ready to listen so we use our voice bots only to understand what the customer is saying taking down the keywords working on products with that for us that is big data for us that is exactly what we want to hear and i think as long as we keep using technology in the favor of the customer uh, it will work for us 
Yeah, that's that's very insightful. Uh, anything you would like to uh, add here, Dhirendra, since you're also uh, you know into digital distribution. So, I mean, how has how have you been able to uh, kind of disrupt distribution, insurance distribution, with the help of technology? Anything you would like to add? Right. Uh, so we uh, we have focused on democratizing technology and bringing it to uh, micro entrepreneurs who could use. Uh, who otherwise did not have an uh, did not have access to this kind of a technology to use uh, 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 use this tech and uh, create uh, employment and create income for themselves and also distribute uh, insurance. Uh, while we have uh, while it is getting used, it is it is there in the market. Uh, one key uh, thing that we solved for very recently was uh, uh, to create uh, something that we call in uh, within the company as TI TIE uh, Tournament Insurance Expert. Uh, uh, because we understood that while the advisor uh, is sitting in front of the customer and there are questions or, uh, that the customer is asking, uh, he he needs some support uh, 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 that allows him to uh, get the uh, expertise uh, that he may need, which is beyond uh, what he would have understood. So we launched this uh, this window concept where there is a total mid insurance expert, uh, there is a customer who is connected uh, on that video call, and then the our partner is connected on the video call. Uh, that helps him answer all the questions so that the customer is fully aware uh, uh, about the product that he is buying and what are the terms and conditions, etc. Uh, and use this expertise to uh, uh, to create the right kind of offering for the customer, which is more uh, more uh, specific to his needs, uh, and uh, and then close that uh, 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 close that sale and then then get the policy issued. Uh, what we have seen is that uh, uh, it, we are seeing very high traction in that uh, because. Uh, uh, there are so many insurance companies, so many products, and it gets a little complex. Uh, but with this, with this uh, expertise, which is over and above uh, what the uh, what the uh, a digital platform is able to solve for, uh, has helped us distribute uh, products. Especially now, wherein we got we received a lot of COVID-specific uh, requests and queries, and uh, uh, and we were able to fulfill uh, uh, this health product requirements. In fact, the it is almost 300 percent up compared to our same time uh, last year. The second example I will give you, uh, uh, where we have actually did it on the call here. Uh, we uh, we discussed about a COVID-specific product in the month of February, uh, when in India it was I mean not yet there, and uh, uh, somewhere around uh, uh, somewhere around end of Feb is when uh, we said that you know is there an insurance company that has a product right now and under the sandbox architecture it already had. Uh, COVID specific product. The time for us that it took to integrate, create marketing material, create that uh, content that was needed and launch it on the platform was only two days. In two days, we were out there with that specific product that could be distributed instantly, real time could be issued uh, uh, and people could get a coverage. Probably it was a first that was launched by Digit uh, that time on our platform. Uh, that was like a, uh, 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 an experience that, that all of our partners and our internally within the product team, tech team, all of, all of us got together to, uh, uh, to make that happen. Uh, this is an example of how you can pick up uh, uh, how fast you can move and how, agi- how our agility helps in uh, distributing insurance products and specifically, specifically in this, uh, this kind of a use case. Yes, definitely. Uh, we we don't we don't have Vijay here. Otherwise, he would have liked to add on it. You know what you just said about uh, democratization of uh, insurance. I we also have a very interesting question from one of our viewers. Uh, this is Prashant from Indore who says that uh, when will democratization of insurance truly happen? Because it still is a highly urban product. So wh- what are you doing about you know tier two, tier three cities? Most of our focus is on tier two, tier three cities. Um, okay. We- uh, we yeah, 85 percent of our business comes from smaller cities. So one thing that we've done is we've launched regional language content. Uh, we we are focusing on creating awareness using uh, extensive marketing, uh, so that they reach out to their in in network treatment expert or a treatment advisor to be able to buy a uh, product. And we're using the right media, the media that is relevant there, uh, for them to be able to uh, uh, to able to access uh, this kind of a product. And hence, uh, also the uh, one key focus for us uh, uh, is to uh, identify gaps that exist because maybe some of the products don't work there. Uh, while we believe that you know creating a product is an insurance company uh, has a right expertise to it, but we are looking at that data, working very closely with insurance companies to uh, create maybe uh, customized products that work for that market, probably at a certain sum assured, uh, uh, with a certain uh, coverage, but which are more simple, easy to buy straight through, uh, 
uh, and uh, uh, and solve the need of a person buying a product which is affordable to him and uh, doesn't keep delaying the decision making on the product especially products like uh, health insurance and we are seeing it's, it's we are early in that journey but we are seeing some success there all right uh, okay so uh, let me come to you v you know um, let's 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 go beyond india and let's talk about other southeast asian countries so uh, uh, you know i was reading a report by bain that that said that you know while singapore is a relatively mature market other southeast asian countries like uh, indonesia thailand even india for that matter are still underserved uh, but these are also some of the fast growing markets so i i want to understand from you uh, you know in these fast growing markets can these um, uh, new age in short tech companies you know can they leverage technology uh, tech enable processes to their advantage to kind of leapfrog incumbents and gain market share yes so yeah i think so i mean what we've seen that in you know in our experience in southeast asia um, whether it's in you know uh, established market more developed market like singapore or in you know uh, more fast growing but less developed market like indonesia um, the Uh, you know the partners that we deal with, uh, the insurance companies that we deal with, they are all eager to use the digital transformation, um, and uh, we are basically. I think we're seeing almost similar level of interactions uh, with our customers, with our um, you know uh, distribution partners, as well as insurance partners. So I believe that uh, in markets uh, in, in Southeast Asia, uh, there is definitely a great need. Um, as well as the desire um, from all over the corners uh, to adopt the digital insurance strategies. Uh, for us, the, the approach we use to start with micro insurance, right? Because um, you know, for a large portion of the population in Southeast Asia, uh, they've never used insurance before. Uh, so um, instead of asking them to start, you know, you, you know, selling them sort of a higher value at the uh, um, insurance part. We found it easier for us to start with a simpler micro insurance product that is just one click or two click for consumers, and that works well for us. All right. Okay, so we're really short of time, so I I really want to you know discuss the regulatory bit in insurance. So uh, Rohan, coming back to you. uh if you could you know quickly give us your views on uh, you know what i just asked that how interventions from is dai can you know benefit or hurt the larger opportunity in insurance yeah i mean look i think uh, um we are sort of uh, progressing uh, you know it it's taken a while for the regulatory bodies to open up to sort of new uh, innovations uh, across the ecosystem whether they be from a underwriting perspective or from a distribution perspective i uh, think sort of how rbi was uh, when fintech opened up in 2010 2011 and sort of what we're starting to see is that 2016 17 ird has sort of become a lot more progressive uh, like i said uh, you know few big partners uh, including policy bazaars and others have been sort of pushing for a lot of change in the regulatory sort of ecosystem uh, this year alone you've sort of seen the output of the sandbox environment which has given scope to a lot of new products which i think at the top level um, creates uh, an ecosystem where new players outside thinking starts to come in so i think uh, you know one of the things that uh, was mentioned earlier uh, in sort of the call was the market is so big uh, and the market is so vastly underpenetrated that you can pick up one corner of the market for one particular sort of sort of innovation and have a build uh, a complete business around it so i i think there is enough space enough room for multiple things whether you're looking at uh you know customizing interesting new products uh trying new distribution uh, models uh new underwriting principles and underwriting models you know we've seen digit aqua and a few other players uh sort of leapfrogging uh, sort of that approach so i think overall we're in a good place uh, i think it only gets better from here on in uh but i think the the you know what tarun sort of said sort of hit the nail on the head which was as long as you sort of look at it from a customer centric perspective what does the customer actually want right i think that's the big question right uh, there are going to be assisted models but as long as you're able to latch on to the uh, and contextualize products whether traditional whether customized i think the ecosystem can grow collectively and improve sort of the status quo of not having enough under insurance or the lack of insurance uh, awareness across the ecosystem uh so you know what you just said uh about what the customer wants we also have a similar question uh where actually it's more of a comment where you know uh, one of our uh, viewers sanjeev is saying that 
uh, if we have to talk about settling the claims digitally uh, you know uh, it is a big problem compared to uh, you know the other methods so who would like to comment on this you know how uh, i mean digital claim settlement definitely helps companies you know uh, cut costs and all that but if i have to talk from the customer's point of view uh, we have a customer here who's saying that his personal experience has been that uh, it is while it is fast to buy a policy digitally when it comes to claim settlement it might not be a very good experience so what is your uh, you know uh, what are your comments in that yeah i mean look i think um, extremely important see there's probably two sort of intervention points for a customer right so one is at the time of policy issuance and the other is claims and one of the biggest mistrust in the industry at large happens because of sort of the the complicated nature of getting the claims processing done now the more complicated the products the more sort of complicated the processes around it now simple products make it easier uh, but that doesn't cover sort of the vast majority of insurance uh, sort of uh, consumers out there Uh, but i think if you look at technology today uh, a lot of the paperwork can be avoided you know uh, you know your ekyc's can be done your aadhar pan card symbol etc pretty much a, a vast majority of the uh, requirements for making reimbursements or claims processing done tarun you know, just spoke about you know the application with which they used to have uh, the assessment of the car done so a lot of that can be improvised mm-hmm. i think what you have to realize is you're still working with on the background legacy ecosystems that have been existing for the last 20 30 years so how do you sort of you can put a facade in the front to say look this is what we'll capture but you have an insurer which has been working in the last 3 decades which still requires manual flow of information which needs to be sent across to him before he makes sort of the assessment so that claim process you may have sort of cut down from a week to two days but on the back end it still requires a week 10 days or 14 days so i, I think as long as uh, the underwriters can be made comfortable uh, in the way that the data collection that's happening digitally is as kosher as what they were getting before you can start to see a lot of improvement uh, from where uh, they were uh, i've sort of made a personal claim on one of my health policies the other day and i was actually pleasantly surprised uh, that the process the perception that claims takes a lot longer is actually yeah. not very true you will actually find the processes for you know mainstream underwriters themselves also have really been revamped so they're fairly quick but there are again nagging issues which will continue to happen uh, and that perception needs to change yeah. so uh, uh, we also, yeah yeah please go ahead please no, so so for us for the general insurance right so one of the ones that we spend a lot of effort on is to Build the our full digital claims processing, and that's um, that works out pretty well uh, for us, right? So both for our device protection as well as for our e-commerce shipping and loss uh, claims. Um, essentially, we are able to get to earn the trust of our underwriters, so that they they dedicated uh, like 99% of the um, claims uh, experience to us. So that uh, we were able to, for example, in our um, in our in our logistic insurance, um, where traditional insurance companies take 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 it like weeks and not a month to handle a claim, we have a guaranteed SLA of 24 hours, uh, and uh, we're able to process most of the claims within one day. And uh, and then for for the uh, for our device protections, right? We have our apps and the systems. Um, Um, through our uh, you know fraud detection uh, technology, we can verify the, the claims very fast. Um, and then, so typically, like you know, almost instantly, the consumer gets to take their phone, for example, if it's broken, to a uh, uh, to one of our authorized repair shops, and they can repair it on the same day. Uh, and because we have all the integrations with the repair shops, uh, that gets the claims gets pro- processed uh, at a very fast pace. Yeah. All right. Um, well, um, I'll have to wrap up because you know we're already <laughs> we've crossed the time limit. Uh, so thank you very much to all the panelists for uh, taking out the time to you know join us and uh, uh, give some really insightful uh, you know commentary on how InsurTech is uh, kind of revamping the whole insurance space in India and beyond India. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, uh, hope to collaborate again uh, for such interesting sessions. Uh, I would also like to thank all our attendees, uh, and I also request you to please uh, go join other session that we are uh, shortly be starting with on uh, machine learning, data science, and artificial intelligence. 
And uh, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much again.